Joining the show tonight, a man who has been a part of every game for Concordia University Ann Arbor since they started playing ball in 2011. The co-defensive coordinator for the Cardinals, Coach Mastrez. What's up, Coach? What's up? How you doing? Happy to be on. Hey, happy to have you back on, by the way. It has been 137 episodes, I believe, from 29 to 166. We're graced with your likeliness over video this time around. It's not just a phone call in. We've we've upgraded at least a little bit in that time span. But March 3rd, 2021, I did the I went back and found the date. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that feels way longer than what the time span actually is. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. But that's what's what's so special is the fact that um, you know, 10 years later, I mean, 3 years later, we can uh come back and <laughs> uh and have a, another conversation, albeit maybe forced by some not great news and I guess catapulting yeah. right off of that. We'll jump into it, man. You guys uh, released the news just last week about uh, this season. 2024 is it for the Cardinals. Uh, they announced last week the athletic programs are going to be cut after this year. The school will remain open. But just talk to me right away about the immediate reactions from you guys, the staff, the players, and, and that whole unit over there. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's definitely you have kind of when we – first find out, found out like you got a wide range of emotions. Like you have just frustration, anger, confusion, um, the uncertainty of what the future holds. And, uh, but you know, for us, like to be able, like we just got out in front of it as much as we could. Like we were transparent, honest with our team. Like we met with them um, hours after we found out to kind of tell them um, coach Shu just was amazing on the zoom, just kind of, laying it out and just telling them the facts of our situation. Like, this is our, our last year at Concordia football. Um, and then we just kind of followed it up, calling um, every kid, kind of seeing where their head was at and kind of explaining, you know, uh, some questions that they had about different things. But it's uh, it's definitely been special talking to the guys and to have over 100 guys locked in to play, I think, is incredible and just a testament to uh, – how special of a group of kids that uh, we've recruited and we have here. Yeah, and I think, you know, with the breaking of that news too, I mean, I, I was going to say it's not optimal time. When is, right? I don't think there is yeah. such thing with an announcement of that sort. But like you said, now you've got a group of guys that are potentially more fueled than ever before about going into August. And before we got going, you had just talked about, man, let's just get to August. Because I'm sure right now, you know, not to say you're just sitting around all day, you have all this free time, but obviously compared to August, it probably feels like that. Right now, there's all these question marks and all these things from the outside world. I'm sure that you and the guys are looking forward to, hey, let's get to fall camp, get our hands on some football, some playbooks, some X's and O's, and just play football. Because uh, that part of it, unlike everything else, is not going to change for you guys, at least this fall. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a hungry, hungry group. Like we have over 30 seniors with COVID guys. We're an older veteran team. A lot of guys have poured in a lot of hours, um, you know, to this season. And, and to me, I think, you know, speaking honestly, I think at NAI, you know, D3 um, level of football, I think that there's always kind of a crew of guys that get into fall camp and they're like, ah, this really isn't for me Absolutely. and those things. And guys leave where to me, Man, if you're rolling with us through this, like you're you're in it, you're a dirty bird ready to go. So, uh, to me, I think having everybody all on that kind of same mindset and uh, kind of already been through a lot of tension to me, like I really, I'm really looking forward to seeing that pay off. You know, when we're playing games this fall. Yeah, and and absolutely not to make light of the situation, but on a, on a real note here, is this potentially the easiest off season and in season when it comes to recruiting for you guys and the staff over there? Yeah, it's uh, I I definitely it's just different to me, yeah. honestly. Like we, uh, um, you know, I really look at it with our freshmen. It's like a lot of them signed, you know, December, January. We got our first email about kind of some uncertainty with our school in February. OK. And, okay. you know, then it was like, yep, we're good to go. We got that news kind of, you know, during spring ball a little bit before. So it was like you were kind of re-recruiting those guys again. And then, you know, this news came in, you know, June, obviously. So you've just kind of been constantly talking to those younger guys. And for us, you know, there's definitely still guys that are uh, – we still have guys reaching out that are interested in joining us, um, even if it's just for a year. Because I think if some guys don't have a home in June, you know, it can be a special thing to uh, to join us for a year and, and see what happens. 
I mean, yeah, you look at those transfer portal numbers, right, as far as the NCAA is concerned, and you've got over 5,000 names still in that. At least, uh, you know, that was about a month ago, so hopefully that number has gone down. But uh, safe to say there's there's more than enough guys to field a couple ball squads uh, still hanging around out there, and a few of them, I would imagine, are pretty talented. But uh, on a very real note, you guys have got a passionate group over there in terms of your coaching staff, and now it becomes – this idea and this looming factor of having to relocate, having to find another job. Now, going through this, you know, they know they're going to be in the job hunt whenever that final whistle blows, whether for you guys it's in, you know, early November or December, whenever that happens, whenever this season comes to an end. How do you not let that affect the mindset? Because I know right now I'm sure the a lot of the rhetoric is about, hey, let's just enjoy the time that we have right now with this current set of guys, this squad. Yeah, I think what's really helped us kind of keep uh... – you know, for like the main thing, the main thing is kind of just like how we talked about our seniors, like our coaches, like we're not a coaching staff that's, you know, been together for a year. Like I've been at Concordia since I was 18, our head coach, you know, like he's been there. This is going to be his 12th or 13th season. Yeah. Like we love this place. And, you know, when we're doing summer workouts and I'm looking in and working out a fifth year senior, like, yeah, the main thing is the main thing. Like, I'm going to give you everything that I have to make this year of football incredible. So, to me, like, it's, I think, uh, what's been cool um, for our staff is, you know, we're kind of relatively all around the same age, and we've all been through, you know, different things. Obviously, you know, my son um, with kind of his health concerns, and it's like, I, you're going to go through uncertain times as a man. And for me, I think having – some great older coaches that are much wiser than I am, like our head coach and Chance Childers, um, just kind of having them as like older guys to really kind of keep this team locked in on that and have one message has been so special. And uh, to just kind of have like, you know, you can't rely just on you. Like you have to have, like you have to have a relationship with Jesus and use that faith to kind of help you through these uncertain times because you're going to have bigger doubts in your life than, uh, you know, what's happening in six months playing college football. Absolutely. So that's been special uh, to kind of tie in with the guys on what they'll learn this year. 100%. And, you, and to grow those connections, those relationships even stronger if, you know, if those don't didn't already exist. But um, it does feel like the, the people in this equation potentially uh, getting the shortest stick possible are those incoming freshmen, the guys that you talk about coming into the fall that, um, you know, hope that like most graduating seniors – they'll be signing on for four or five years or whatever that looks like. And now they're going to have to go and turn around and make that change. Uh, it kind of goes right into my next question of being like, we talked about the coaches potentially having to be on or not potentially going to have to be on the job hunt here. And uh, you know, half a year or whatever it is, this turns almost into a contract year for the players. If, if we're talking NFL terms, they got to they go out there and, and, and earn their money, so to speak next year. That's just an interesting idea in the world of, of college athletics. And I think a lot of people say they play every year like it's a, like it's a contract year. That's BS, um, at least from my perspective. But th and I guess in all intents and purposes, that's what this is for your guys. It's kind of interesting to see it in that perspective. Yeah, no, it's been real interesting to have those conversations because each grade level is almost a little bit different with the questions that they ask. And okay. for a lot of the freshmen, I think, um, especially them, like, we have very, you know, tight knit forged relationships with how much they've been through with us. And, uh, you know, my plan definitely, you know, I want to keep coaching college football. That's my plan. And, uh, I'm like, I want to coach you for four years, no matter where I'm at. Yeah. And so that's Absolutely. kind of that's, been one of the point. things we've talked about. So, um, to us, and then it's also making a commitment to the guys, like, you know, we're honest and we tell you everything about Concordia when we've, when we recruited you here, where it's like, we are going to work to find the best home possible for you. Like that is our job after this is over is uh, making sure that, that you have every opportunity that you want. Heck yeah. Going to be a lot of, uh, wherever, you know, wherever that, that staff branches out and ends up, uh, kind of finding their, finding their homes here in the next, uh, year or so. A lot of the, more of that recruiting back, uh, if you will, and, and trying to keep those guys, depending on what level, uh, those respective, uh, people end up at, but talk about the void that this program is going to leave in a, in a very saturated football state that has, is Michigan between all levels. This is the top performing NAI team in the state and one in a conference that we'll talk about in a little bit that is just loaded top to bottom with talent. What does uh, what is Michigan and, and the NAI going to miss? I guess with this squad in in, in short. Yeah, it's definitely going to be different. Uh, like it's hard for me to even comprehend 
what uh, what it's going to look like without us there. Because you talk about, you know, our location is so different, I feel like, than a lot of schools, you know, being so close to Michigan and downtown Ann Arbor. Um, that is definitely different. It's just another, you know, it's been a great opportunity to really help. You know, there's a ton of Michigan high school football players that get opportunities to go play football. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, they're losing another school that's able to do that. So to me, it's definitely, it's, it's so tough for me to even uh, kind of envision that and wrap my head around that, that it'll be a, uh, It'll definitely be a changeup, but there's uh yeah, our conference will definitely look different when uh when we're out of it. Yeah, man. That's that's to say in the least, right? Obviously. And um, you know, looking at this hopefully maybe in a little bit of a potential spin or a potential light, if you will, having this I think you mentioned it before we got going, and that most schools in this situation, Birmingham Southern for a great example in recent memory, they don't find out until it is literally too late in the fact that, you know, this thing's closing, it could happen in a week or a month, right? You guys getting this advance is, is certainly peculiar in that regard. Does that process benefit the families of those on the coaching staff potentially at all who are now going to be uh, prepared at least a little bit more for a change of scenery in six to eight months, something along those lines, because you talk about the family aspect and what is uh, in this coaching world for these uh, coaches having to usually relocate their entire families and significant others that have positions of their own. Does that Knowing that in this far in advance, does that at least ease that process a bit? Yeah, it's that's yeah, it's tough. I feel like uh, I feel like kind of what you said earlier. Like there's no uh, there's no perfect time for it, but um, yeah, definitely for us, like we kind of can think through those things for a minute now in June. But uh, I feel like for us, like we really we really kind of believe in in the team that we have and. For us, I think, like, the best chance for us to kind of stick together and to all be able to, you know, keep coaching college football is to go out and have a great year this year. So, for me, I think it's some of, uh, you know, I've definitely, like, talked to my wife about, you know, logistically, you know, like, what are states, what are options, things like that. Yeah. Um, but outside of that, I've just been uh, – I really believe in this football team and – I think that uh, the Lord's always taken care of and provided for me. And uh, so I, I got confidence that uh, that I'll wind up where I'm supposed to. Hell yeah. No better time to, to buy in than the present, man. But let's talk about this year. Let's talk about this team. The schedule for this year is one that, uh, like I mentioned earlier, man, it's, it's a tough schedule, but I guess in short, nothing that you guys aren't used to. On your side of the conference, the obvious tall tasks, Indiana Wesleyan, Taylor, those kind of squads. But, then, man, the Midwest side of the MS, uh, MFSA, it's a tough one off the, off the tongue there, but <laughs> squads like St. Francis, St. Xavier, those kind of teams, again, a really tough schedule, but it's a tough conference, nothing that you guys aren't used to. Is that kind of the general consensus? Yeah, like it's – Year in, year out, the MSFA is, I think, the best conference in the country. And there's a lot of good coaches on every team and a lot of really talented players. And we've gotten, you know, there's definitely recruiting battles that have happened. So I feel like teams kind of naturally know each other really, really well. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, it's going to be a tough schedule. I'm definitely, like, I'm really excited, you know, for our home opener because um, I feel like it's, you're excited for every opening game of every yeah. of every season, but I definitely think our place will be rocking because, you know, you got X amount of home games guaranteed to you. And uh, I think there's going to be a lot of people that come out to our games. Like I, our games are packed to begin with, but I think there's going to be even more people there because um, they know it's like, yeah, this is the last home opener ever. Um, so I'm really excited to see kind of the, the support that our players feel um, when we play at home. Um, but yeah, no, we have, I'm really excited for our schedule. We got three night games, which will be a blast for the guys. Um, and then ending it with our, you know, mid east side of the conference. So it'll be it'll be great football all year long. Hell yeah, man! The uh, Dirty Birds end game on the graphic, by the way, that's just yeah. That awesome. We had we had an alumni Hunter Maynard that died. he is he's a wizard at doing that <laughs> graphic. So that's awesome. Had, yeah, I, w I was just talking with him about it. I was like, you know, because I was like, hey, we don't want to talk about last dance because it's like, that's not our own thing. But I'm like, yeah. end game thus. So, uh, yeah, no, I think that's going to be going to be sweet for the guys and some of the things we do with the team with that, uh, which I think will be pretty fun. That is awesome, man. And, and you know, being able to not make light in it, but just uh, to embrace it, right, in, in that oh, capacity. Oh, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, it is. You're right. That's exactly. It is. It absolutely is. So, um we're pulling for you over here, man. Not that we haven't been in the past, but uh, really excited to to see what you guys go and do. Um, you know, they say the most 
a dangerous person, and someone's got nothing to lose. And, and you guys are are all eggs in all eggs in one basket right now. Everybody's uh, rowing in the same direction over there at uh, at Concordia. So excited to see not only that opener, but then what you continue to do throughout the season. This is a team that has been no stranger to uh, some potential postseason success. So uh, see what kind of uh, Cinderella story you guys cook up down there in Ann Arbor. Yeah, we're working for it, so we're we're excited. Uh, we're excited to get the ball rolling. Absolutely. Coach, thank you so much for your time, man. So glad you can come back on here, connect, and uh, wish you the best. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good night.